It's passions and desires. You are not trying to crucify it. He said, if you come and say, I belong to Christ, I have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Say it. That's what the word of God says. Romans 6, 1 to 4. You have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. No, no, no. Can you give us the real King James? I want, because I knew something was off. Can you give us real King James? Thank you. Uh, Romans 6, yeah. Thank you very much. I knew, you know, there was some, yeah, with his passions. Uh, the, the real King James called with his affections and lust. I like that one. It, it goes there. <laughs> it goes there. Romans 6, 1. Okay, thank you. What shall we say then from verse 1 to 4? Shall we continue saying that grace may abound? You read in Galatians 5, verse 24, that you have crucified the, the flesh and, the, and its affections and lust because you are in Christ. He says, shall we continue grace that, in, in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2. God forbid. In, it's impossible. How shall we that are dead? Come on, say I'm dead. That's what the word says. To sin live any longer therein. Galatians tells you that you have crucified it. You, have, you are not trying to crucify. You have crucified it because you are in Christ now. God forbid. Verse 3 now. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also what? walk in the newness of life. Give us verse 14 please. Verse 14. For sin shall not what? Have dominion over you. Why? For you are not under the law, but under grace. Come on, say, I'm under grace. Say, like you mean, I'm under grace. I'm under the grace of God. Galatians 6, verse 14. Galatians 6, 14. Talabondo do bo sataya balabando siya. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the word is crucified unto me and I unto the word. I am crucified unto the word. I'm dead to the world. And the word is dead to me. So we don't know each other. Come on, say, we don't recognize each other. The word is dead to me and I'm dead to the world. So as far as the word is concerned, I am dead. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Galatians 3, 26 to 27. Galatians 3, 26 to 27. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 27. For as many of, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have what put on, come on say, I've put on Christ. I have put on Christ. That's what Jesus Christ says, our faith. Romans 3, verse 25. He doesn't just speak faith. He is our faith as well. I said, I mentioned that last week. Remember, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Glory to God. So in 1 John 3 verse 9, he says he cannot sin. So God's word says, I can't sin. Because the seed of God is in me. Luke 8 verse 11 says, the seed is the word of God. All right? 1 Peter 1 23. Give us 1 Peter 1 23. Luke 8 11 says, the seed is the word of God. So what word are we talking about? Look at 1 Peter 1 23. Uh -huh. Can we read this together? Watch this now. Let's read together. Being born again. Uh-huh. You see it? He says he cannot sin because his seed is in him. Being born again, that's the incorruptible seed. The seed of the word of God. And it's a person. You know the word is a person? Christ Jesus. How does Christ live in you? Through the Holy Ghost. That's Christ in you. The hope of glory. The Holy Ghost. That's Christ in you. I shared in December. Remember in December 25? How that God... God can't die. For God to die. You know, do you know the concept of um, Trinity? Oh, Trinity, God is three. Oh, my. I, the Bible says God is one. Yeah. 
is one, the concept of Trinity. Is, Trinity is a concept of redemption. Do you know that Trinity that we're talking about is an expression of God's love to us? It's so that we can understand redemption, that the redemptive work of God through Christ. That's the purpose of Trinity. As God, it cannot die. Only man can die for man. As a God, he can't die. He had to put on flesh so he can take your place. So he became a man. The man, Christ Jesus, 1 Peter 2, 5, and 1 Timothy 2, 5. The man, Christ Jesus. So as God, he became a man in Christ Jesus. But as a man, he saw your frailties. As God, he saw everything. This man can't do it. He can't do it. He has to change his nature. For him to do it, I got to live in him. A man cannot live inside another man. So he became Holy Ghost. He's the same God. But because of the limited understanding of man, oh, come on now. God, but I've seen Jesus saying that. I've seen Jesus praying. Who was he praying to? I've seen Jesus talking. Jesus was being baptized in water. And the Bible says a voice came from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And you see, is God is the same person. He's talking from heaven. He's the same person that's being baptized. And is the person that lives inside me. I'm confused now. Why are you confused? That's very simple. You mean to say that he is God? Do you know what God means? If he's God, he can't talk from over there and talk over here, from talk over here and talk over here and talk over there. It can talk in one million places at the same time. Because he's God. And if he's God, he can become anything that he wants to be. Do you know he never revealed his name? What, what is the name of God? Name is something that uses us to distinguish people from other, others. Your name is different from us. So we can differentiate you so anywhere you go. But God has no equal. You don't, need, you don't say, ah, ah, this is your name now so that you know at least. He has no equal, so he has no name. Guess what he did? He said, ah, Moses, Moses said, what is your name? What will I say to them? He said, I am. What's the meaning of I am? I can be whatever I want to be. Tomorrow I can be um, light of the world. <laughs> I will be what I will be. That's the meaning of I am. Self-existing one. It doesn't need you to exist. I am self-existing. I used to say to people, when I say, praise God, you better open your mouth and say, Father, I give a thing. Because it doesn't, whether you thank him or not, he's God. You're saying, thank you, Jesus. It doesn't hurt to him. Guess what he helps? He helps you. So I, I was listening to people in praise somewhere years ago. I said, you better praise God. I said, because when you go away to God, he's helping you. He doesn't help him. It's not making him feel like, oh, God is now shaking. It's, not, it's the same. The Bible says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change. Serve God with your life. No. I don't want to serve God. It doesn't change him. Guess who that helps? You. Live holy. I don't want to live holy. Right. Who does it help? You. It doesn't help God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you know how many people that have died? He is still God. You understand what I'm saying? So he says, I am. I will be what I will be. That's what it says. Come on, say, I've been born of the word of God. I've been born of the word. I am born of the word. Let me tell you, when it tells you something, you better take it to the, you can take it to the bank because it will never change. Whatever it says, it will stand. Nothing can change it. Glory to God. He said, being born of, again, not of corruption, but of incorruption, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Oh, producing the works of, you see, when that word that lives in you, the life, the life that makes living for God, producing, producing the works of righteousness. It makes the works of righteousness possible through you. That's the, the life that lives in you. And you know, that only goes, is the cure for sin. It's the cure for sin. The Holy Ghost doesn't, you know, no, it does better than forgive your sin. It does better. It makes sin become impossible for you. When you, when you unite really with him, 
it makes it become impossible, an impossibility for you because it causes your true nature to flow, your true nature in you. Come on, say, I have the nature of righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.13, look at what they say. Ephesians 1.13. In whom also ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with, the, with that Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed. You were, that was the down payment, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on, see, I belong to God forever. I belong to God eternally. I belong to God eternally. I belong to God forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's the seal that I have. The seal of the Holy Ghost. Years ago, year 2000, I woke up. And how many years ago is that? 22 years ago. I woke up. And when I woke up, I said, Lord, I just sleep. I wake up. They say there's a devil and it attacks people in the night. I just, I, I just... And he said, because you have been redeemed. You know what that means? You've been bought. I've been paid for. I'm not for sale. Let me say to your neighbor, I'm not for sale. <laughs> I'm not for sale. I've been bought. Jesus bought me. You see, he was the highest bidder. <laughs> and I switched to his side when I saw the deal. Woo, glory to God. That devil is bad. There's no way I would. How could, that's why we are preaching the gospel today. How could somebody ever sign up with the devil? Can you imagine that? And say it's going to be, you know, whether ignorant or whatever way. That's why you have to preach this gospel and say, God, come on, you better move over to this side. There's nothing, there's nothing there. Getting drunk and get, what life is that? What is that? That's no life. Getting drunk and alcohol and everything and just messed up and all that. Oh, but there's a life in Christ. There's a, come on, see, there's a life in Christ. And that life is in me. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5.5. 5. 2 Corinthians 5.5. 5. Mm. Hey. <laughs> now he that robbed us. For the self same thing is God. Who also had given unto us. The endness of the spirit. He's, talk, he's, he's talking about the same. Down payment. The earnest of the spirit. God, you know, when you go to buy a product somewhere, ah, I want to buy this stuff, and uh, um, can I just go? I, I don't have enough cash here, but I've got 50 quid. How much is it? 80 quid. It's okay. I'm going to drop 50 quid, and I'm going to get the Holy Ghost is a down payment. So they reserve it and say it belongs. Have you ever reserved something? You want to buy a car? They say, reserved, reserved. Put this down for to reserve it. The Holy Ghost is proof that you belong to God. He puts a, that's the reserve God put in there. That's me there, right there. It belongs to me. It is mine. I'm coming for this one when I come back again. It is mine. How can you allow the devil to touch you, any part of you, spirit, soul, and body? When, you, when somebody has already put a deposit, Come and say, I'm God. I belong to God. I belong to God. Romans 8, verse 11. Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus, that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. What are you struggling with in your body today? What is the situation in your body? What is the situation of your health? The Bible says it will quicken. It means to give life to your mortal body. If there is death being going on in your body, it doesn't matter what that death signifies. It doesn't matter what that sickness signifies. It doesn't matter what it is called. You say, mighty Holy Ghost, you are in me. Mighty Holy Ghost, you are in me. And if that same spirit dwells in me, it will quicken my mortal bodies. You pray in the Holy Ghost. Branda Karasha Baraba. Hey, I command my body, be quickened right now in the name of you. You start speaking to your body. Respond to the word of God. Respond to the word of God. Respond to the word of God. You start speaking life to your body. A dear man of God said, I woke up one day. He said, I woke up and one side of my body was paralyzed. 
He said, one side of my body was dead. He said, but you know what? I knew what to do before now. He said, I couldn't lift. I think it was his hand. He said, he couldn't lift it. This hand was completely gone many years ago. He said, no, no, no. He says, no. Hey! He said, I, started, I started talking. Greater is he there is in me than he that is in the world. I started speaking the word. I started speaking the word. He said, there was no light. I couldn't lift it. And he said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me. He said, I wasn't speaking out of fear. I wasn't speaking out of anxiety. I said, oh, God, you better do something. Now. No. I, he said, I know how this thing works. Greater is he. I've got the life of God in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I've got the life of God. I've got the life of God. The life of God flows through me. Zama katobere kasane. Indo besi kama. La dosi prakeste. Belu uzo bere katoma. Lembri de kuso predike. He said, as I start saying that, as I start speaking life, as I start speaking life, woo, that will, I, he said, I start feeling life coming to it. Life start flowing to it. He said, I start feeling life. Woo, I start getting feelings, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, I'm not going to stop. I kept going. I kept going. I kept going. As I, I said, I kept going. I kept going. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All of a sudden, my hands went up. Glory to God. That's how to put the word of God to work in your life. That's how to put the word of God to work in your life. That's what he did in his own situation. I'm going to say to your neighbor, when are you going to begin to trust God? So I said today, what, are you, what to do to overcome sin, the flesh, lust, and the conscience of sin? Number one, accept that you have overcome. See all the scriptures that I've given you? I gave you all of those scriptures to establish this point here. Accept that you have overcome. You are not going to overcome. I have. See, it is the prayer of Lord. Help us to overcome. We have overcome the world in the name of Jesus. And you blast out in tongues on that. Makala Mado. I have overcome the world. Marakuso Pokataya. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have accepted it. See, don't say it out of Lord. I'm saying it so it can become. No, I am saying it because it is the reality. You, listen to me, you're not trying to be a success. What, the reason you are here today and why you have to do exams and all of this is so you can perform. You've already won. You just have to perform what does, you just have to act out the script. Come on, say to your neighbor, act it well. Act the script well. Act out the script well. You're already a success. You can't fail. Come on, say to your neighbor, you can't fail. Failure, I don't see failure on you. You are an A star. You are an A star. If there's anything above that, that's what you are. Accept that you have overcome it. Accept that you have overcome that habit. Accept what the word of God says. Don't say to overcome it. Say it because you know you have already overcome it. I have already overcome you. What is that? Mention it. I have overcome anger. This thing that just runs, I have overcome you. You just, this rage that comes every now and again, when you just bust that, nobody can hold you down. Uh -huh. You speak to it. I have overcome you. Mention it. I have overcome you in Christ. Joshua 1 8. This book of the Lord. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the Lord shall know what? Depart out of your mouth, not out of your heart. I know many of us read it as out of your heart. No, out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate day and night. What does it say? Day and night. That you may observe to do. In order for you to do the word of God, you must talk it. Oh, I, I know I'm the righteousness of God, but I don't have to say it. Then you will never leave it. You want to live righteousness? You want to live the life of righteousness? You must say it to live it. And it tells you this secret. Day and night. Don't just say, well, I, I, I said it on Monday, but I didn't forget. I, I didn't remember again until Friday or until Sunday. No, you say it Monday, day and night on Monday. So it must be your life. You see what I quoted there? Greater is he, there is a me, then there's I don't know. I'm, I cannot tell you how many times I say it during the day. I say it, I, I could wake up. It doesn't matter what, what I'm doing. I could wake up and then, greater is he, there is a me, then there's in the world. I'm saying it all the time. Guess what? You are going to leave it. The key to leaving the word of God is in talking it. It, told, it tells us here. You want to leave the word of God, you talk it. It doesn't matter what the habit is. It doesn't matter. 
if it's lateness, talk it. I have overcome lateness. Ah, that's serious? Yeah, talk it. If it is talking too much, I have overcome, you know. Talkativeness. I have overcome it. I have overcome you. You, all the time, you, you have an excuse for something. I have overcome you. I have overcome you. Say it with your mouth. I have overcome it. Mention those issues. Don't argue. Don't, don't be vague. Don't be vague. Don't say, well, well, I have overcome it. No. Don't you know what those issues are? The ones that have been a challenge. Mention them. Christianity is for doing. Colossians 3, verse 8 to 10. Colossians 3, verse 8 to 10. Look at what it says. But now ye also put off all this. What this now? Put off all this. What? Anger? Why? Because it's not in your nature. Oh, can I? No, I'm not. The anger is talking about, you know, it's not that he's saying that that emotion should die in you. Because there's also only anger. And there are times you need to release it at the right times. But anger here, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Feel the communication out of your mouth. How does it, is it out of your mouth? Put them out of your mouth, through your mouth, okay? Verse 9, lie not one to another. It didn't say put them out of your mouth. It said out of your mouth. Put them out, out of your mouth. You put anger out of it. You put malice out through the, your mouth. Because this, the Bible tells us in James chapter 3, one, two, six. It tells us that a man that can bridle, that can, that can, that can use his words right, that is perfect word, it can, it can control the whole body. How do you control the body? With your mouth. Oh, no. Once I do that, I lose control. Yeah, because you said that with your mouth, that you lose control. I, no, nobody can have it. I can, nobody can be patient. Yeah, you just said it. Because the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. I've said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, he said, choose life. How do you choose it? Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You choose with your mouth. Where you want to go with your life? Mouth. I told you, man, there was an earthquake. The man was recovered. He wasn't saved. But, and they asked him, how come you're still alive? He said, because when I was going down, I, he said, when the earthquake happened, I was going down, I said, I refuse to die. He's not saved. But he said, I refuse to die. He was there. He was recovered three days later. He's not a believer, but he said that with his mouth. Life and death are in the power of the mouth. And Jesus didn't say only for believers. It's just that you have the power of God to back it up. That's a man. He said, I refuse to die. I knew a man, out of another man, he was in the plane crash. This one was a believer. He, the plane was, he, he was the only survivor. He shared this testimony in church. The plane crashed. They landed on water. And the man said, I refuse to that. He said, he cannot explain it, but he just, just opened the plane. His seat was, he was taken out with the seat out of the plane. I don't know how this thing happened. That's his testimony. He said, when he, when he landed on water, that he was suspended like this, floating. He said, every time he tried to look back and say, what, what is holding me up? He starts sinking. When he looks, when he keeps his face forward again, he's lifted up. He said, I want to see this stuff. He said, I try to look back and see what's. He said, I start sinking. I said, All right, you know what? I don't have to see. Let me just keep it. Let me just stand. Let me just stay here until help comes. He was recovered. He said, I refuse to die. Doctors say he gave up the ghost. She gave up the ghost. Until she gave it up, he was still there. So I'm saying to you today, Accept what the word of God has said. Which he said, take it out of your mouth. From your mouth, you talk it out. From today, I declare. See, even if you don't see, keep talking. Is it day and night? Day and night, keep talking that word. Keep saying that. Keep saying, I am the head, not the 
tell. All things work together for my good. Begin to say, I, this thing is out of my life. This impatience is out of my life. No, I will not struggle. I will not struggle. No, no, no. I do not struggle with anxiety. Anxiety is out of my life. You keep saying that. Anxiety is an, out of my life. I have overcome anxiety. I have overcome it. This panic, I have overcome panic attacks. I have overcome it. What is that sickness? I have overcome it. I have overcome it. Start talking. I have overcome asthma. I have overcome high blood pressure. I have overcome, uh, um, uh, I have overcome whatever. Migraine addicts, diabetes, I overcome it. Type 2, type 1, type 3. I have overcome you in the name of Jesus. Keep talking it. Keep talking it. Keep talking it. And when you talk it in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you how to walk your faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have overcome it. This pain in my back, I have overcome it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have overcome it. I, God cannot lie. I believe his word. I have overcome it. I have overcome it. I have overcome it. In the name of Jesus, I have overcome it. You keep talking it. You keep talking it. Suffocate the devil. You, you know, suffocate him. Get him suffocated. I have overcome it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, by Yakotobo. The Bible says the strangers will hear my voice and they will fade out of their close places. Psalms 18, verse 44 to 45. The strangers must hear you. They must hear you. They must hear you. Demons must hear you. Somebody came to um to I think Ryan a bunk or so. Of blessed memory, he said, oh, "Oh, I think, I think there's some demons in the house, and there's some voices I've been hearing in the house." Uh -uh. And the man said, "You've been too quiet. You've been too quiet in the house. You gotta go back to your house and start talking. I am the head. I am not the tail. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. There is life of God here. Peace that's work here. You he said, demons in my house? I have, he doesn't pay rent. I see in my house. He doesn't pay the mortgage." What are you talking about? You got to start speaking that word. And you will discover, guess what? When, you, when those habits disappear out of your life, you will not know. You will not know. You say, ah, I don't break out like I used to break out before. Because the word of God is at work. The word of God is at work. Your nature is taking what is flowing out of you now. Hey, Accept that you have overcome. Number two, reckon your body dead to sin and alive to God. Romans 6 verse 11. Romans 6 11, Romans 6 16. Romans 6 11, Romans 6 16. Makotobo shibalaba. Likewise reckon ye also yourself to be what? Dead indeed to sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to say to your neighbor, reckon yourself dead to sin. What does that mean? It's an accounting term. Account it dead. Account your body dead. Oh, look, did you see that? Said, I'm dead to that. <laughs> dead. <laughs> we went to preach somewhere, and the man was, you know, uh, in my, in the minister I was a part of before we started the church, uh, and, and this man was there. He was kind of doing something. He was, you know, he was getting mad at us preaching and all that. And the lady that I was with says to me, oh, oh I says, I'm dead to that. I can't see what he's doing. I, I'm here to preach the gospel. I don't know what it looks like. We are in another place one time with the cross and this guy was like, almost somebody was holding him back. And I was with, the, with some guys from the church and, and this guy was telling me, oh, if, I, if that was him in the world, what he used to do, is it that man over there? He was coming to me, I said, I can tell you, he can't get here. And I don't need to pray about it, but he can't get here. But somebody was holding him back because there's a life at work. Come on, say lives at work in me. Child of God, you have no fear. Reckon yourself dead. Many things that we're struggling because I'm showing you now the Bible says, reckon yourself dead to sin. Verse 16 of that scripture, Romans 6 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants? What is now? To obey his servant ye have to whom you obey. So God has left this as a choice to you, just like the first Adam and the second Adam. It's your choice now. You can choose to obey God unto righteousness and to sin. You can choose either. He said, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, you can choose. God never took that thing away from us. He gave you a nature of righteousness. And he says, you can still choose. That is the power of love. He said, I still give you the choice. But look at what Paul said. He said, how, how, how can we that are dead? How, how? I don't have that nature. The nature that makes me want to, I don't have it. The longing for sin is not my nature. I don't have that nature. 
the more conscious you are of that nature, the better you become. You, you, you become conscious of that nature. Romans 8 verse 12. Romans 8 12. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh. We don't hold the flesh nothing. We are not debtors. It's not, it's not, we are not under an obligation to live after the flesh. After the can- we are not under an obligation. It's not by force. So when you hear people say, I can't help it, and it's born again, no. It's a, it's a lie. I just couldn't help it. No. The Bible says we are not under an obligation and God cannot lie. There's no such thing that, but reckon yourself dead to sin. Have you reckoned yourself? I heard a man say that, you know, a woman came to her and they knew her husband was dead. Her husband was dead. They consoled her and everything. But in about a few weeks later, she came to the man of God and said, um, in the night, I saw him. And he was speaking to me on things to do. Ah. I said, she doesn't get it yet. That, will, that cannot be your husband talking to you. And the reason your husband can still come in the night and talk to you, or your father can still come to you, the Bible says there's a God. Yes, you, we, you don't have anything to do with the dead. Whether dead in Christ, be dead in whatever. You don't have anything to do with the dead. So don't let nobody tell you, anybody tell you, you know, uh, uh, some man of God showed up in my dream and is giving instructions. Because the man of God, no. Any instruction that he needs to give you are in his messages that uh, on, on earth right now. Not him showing up in your sermon and saying, oh, you are working in miracles now. No, it's not from God. It is not what? From God, according to the scriptures. The dead and the living, no. They are alive in Christ, but they will not be coming to talk to you. Jesus already said they have Moses with them. So there's no need for anybody to go from the dead to them. Because they cannot be convinced any more than the word of God that's already alive. Come on, say, I believe the truth of the word of God. You know why the woman had a problem? Because she had not reckoned her husband dead. That's the challenge. You have not accepted that he's dead. The moment you accept he's dead, if he's a believer, he's resting. He's enjoying his life in heaven. Okay? I'm living my life here. He's not the one talking to me. He's not the one. And that's how people start getting deceived. And bondage comes in their life. Because they were listening to the wrong spirit. Did you not see, hear that spirit speaking after Paul? These are the servants of God. He was speaking the truth. But guess what? Paul knew Paul was wise. If Satan is saying this, it was, see, even though he was saying these are the servants of God, people were not going to Paul. You know why? Because that only proved that ministry was true. Oh, if he can say that, and we actually have seen them doing that, Paul said, we got to arrest this spirit. So when something like that shows up in your dream, you arrest the spirit of death. I have no pl- place with you. You have no place in my life. Never! Don't you come back again. You speak to it. You reckon yourself dead. And finally, listen to the word and pray in the spirit often. The Bible says in Romans 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing. Help me say to your neighbor, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Child of God, the word of God and prayer is food. Feed on it. Feed on the word. Listen, you can't live in victory if you don't change your diet. You can't. There's a, there's a diet you have to go on. You can't keep eating the same fear that you've been eating all week, anxiety, all this new, these people that feed you with negativity. You, they, know to know, they know to call your number because they know what you like to hear. You like to hear about those things that bring fear. Many of those things you have listened to for years has not even happened. But you have listened to them. But it's going to come. It's going to come. You are still living now. They haven't happened. But you are still believing that lie. You have been listening to this week. I wish you would listen to the word of God the same way. Go back, listen to this message again because it's the word of God that is coming to you. See, that brings out your nature. Change your diet. Even though you are a winner potentially, 
it is not your experience. Potential energy is usually accepted in terms of kinetic energy. <laughs> potential energy, it's just potential, it just has potential. Oh, you have potential to be this, but it doesn't happen. It's inert, it's innate. All right, but it doesn't happen. Potential. You gotta tell it to real. Listen at the word. Your flesh doesn't want to listen. You've, you've heard, you followed the uh, Coronation Street, uh, Emmerday, all the omnibus. Some people all oh, weekend. Oh, just oh, come on now. Did you hear the, the spoilers? So I've been watching the uh, But you're following all that. That's not going to give you faith. Hear this word. Let your spirit be full of the word of God. Help me say to your neighbor, give the word of God time to work. Philippians 2.13, let's close with that. Philippians 2.13, he says, God is at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The word of God is for doing, child of God. I have to tell you the truth. The word of God is for doing, is for doing. Listen to the word of God and give yourself to praying in the spirit. Listen to the word of God and give yourself to praying in the spirit. You must pray in the spirit. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what that habit is. When you give yourself to the word of God, you are Man, Listen, you are not even praying about habit. I've already told you how to use the word of God. Just keep talking the word. Just praying alone. I can tell you from practical experience. I'm not praying about nothing. I'm a zo paranoto. Membri de kazo. Libra kasa. La bonti karasoto. Membri de koska bra de kedu bra de. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. You just know this. What is God? Anybody that's not given to praying like this will leave out the kind of nature. When believers don't give themselves to pray in the spirit, to don't give them this prayer as a lifestyle, they live carnal lives. You live fleshly lives. You live according to the dictates of your flesh. But you don't want to live according to the dictates of the flesh? Give yourself to pray in the Let's rise up on our feet. Come on, pray in the spirit now. Mado borobo sadaba e koribe. So pretty. Hey, if you are watching us, uh, you have not been born again. Let's keep praying in the spirit. Let's be praying in the spirit. Let's lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Men da 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 If you have not been born again, you're watching us. Would you say this after me now? And we're gonna get you baptized in the Holy Ghost today. If you have not been born again, say this after me. Say, oh Lord God, I come before you today. I know that I'm a sinner, but I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. I believe that He died for me, and I confess Him as the Lord of my life today. Oh, I received the gift of eternal life. And today I am born again in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that your name be named on this once, that your glory fill their lives, that they are established in Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. If you said that prayer, congratulations to you, Marama Tov. Hey, I cover you today with God's goodness and God's love. And if you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost today, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I'm going to pray for you right now. You see, we're already flowing here. I'm going to pray for you in the Holy Ghost. You just lift your voice and pray. It's not going to come from your understanding. Open, we can't teach it. It's the Holy Ghost that teaches your tongue. And how it teaches your tongue is that it doesn't force you to speak. You open your mouth and you start talking and it will flow. Yes, that is the teaching of the Spirit. We can't teach you and say, uh, say ba 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 ba. No, we can't say that. It is not magic. It is supernatural. But it happens the same way they told you to say A and B and C at school. You are going to speak with your mouth now. And I pray for this once here today. Oh, under the influence of my voice right now. 
Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now open your mouth and speak. 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 In the name of Jesus, you have received the ability of the Spirit. You have received the power of the Spirit. Open your mouth and speak right now. Speak in the name of Jesus. Some of you today, sicknesses are going to be flushed out of your body. Diseases are coming out of you. Infirmities are coming out of your body. That pain that has been on your neck, on your shoulder, on your chest is coming out right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, I chase out every stranger in your body today. Every stranger called sickness, it doesn't matter what his name is called. If it's eye blood pressure, if it's diabetes, if it's asthma, I adjure them right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be loose from their hold. Be loose from their hold. I declare you healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive that word and believe it. Receive that word right now and believe it. Whatever is that sickness called today, I address the spirit of infirmity on, on anyone under the influence of my voice. Come out of their bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed, be healed, be healed right now. You are made whole, you are made free. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter what you could not do before. Do it now. If you couldn't stand, stand. If you couldn't bend, bend now. That pain is gone out of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come on, say with me. Say, I accept the word of God as truth. I accept the word of God as truth. I reckon myself dead to sin and alive to God and alive to righteousness and alive to the nature, my nature in Christ. The nature of righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. I am a doer of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word of God. I grow in my faith on a daily basis. Christ Jesus is my faith. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Even my faith in Christ. I am not trying to overcome the world. I have already overcome the world. I therefore affirm my victory today. My victory in Christ. I decree and I declare it that I'm victorious in Christ. In my spiritual work, I'm victorious. In my health, I'm victorious. In my soul, I am victorious. I declare that my soul is restored in the name of Jesus Christ because I have been born of the Word of God, the incorruptible seed. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am clean today from sickness, from sin, from infirmities, from condemnation, from the guilt of sin. I am free by the Holy Ghost. I am free in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty Holy Ghost, thank you for your presence in me and your presence with me. And I have overcome in this world. I have overcome the loss of the flesh. I have overcome the loss of the eyes. I have overcome the pride of life. I have overcome every sickness. I have overcome the spirit of infirmity. I have overcome the God of this world. I have overcome frustrations. I have overcome depression. I have overcome tribulations in this world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the devil is under my feet. I trample on sickness and scorpions and serpents of this life and over all the works of the enemy. Come on, stamp your feet now. Over all the works of the enemy. And no thing shall by enemies hurt me. No thing shall by enemies hurt me. In Jesus Christ's name, I am alive in Christ. I am alive in Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. 
My needs are met by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. I am full of the Holy Ghost. I am the full of the Holy Ghost. It is well with my soul. It is well with my family. I am a preacher of the good news. I'm not ashamed to declare the good news of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that I'm victorious in my family. I declare victory in my family. Victory every day in my family. I declare this week is a week of favor. Good report on every side. I give the peace of God to this nation. I speak the peace of God to the nations of the world. I speak the peace of God to Eastern Europe. I speak it to the United Kingdom today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we arrest the spirit of unrest. We are arrested now and we cast you out. In the name of Jesus Christ, we cast you out of our streets. We cast you out of the government. In the name of Jesus Christ, I arrest the spirit of strife and confusion. In my family, in the name of Jesus, I speak light and direction in my family. I declare the love of God is at work in my family. I bind the spirit of division off of my family right now. I bind the spirit of sickness and infirmities off of my family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak the life of God. The life of God works in my family. I cast out depression for my family. I cast out divorce for my family. I cast Stop pain and infirmities for my family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lose my family from the pangs of death. I lose my family from the power of sickness by the life of God. As a priest of God, I declare the freedom of God in my family, in my life. Freedom reigns in my life. Freedom reigns in my family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cast out the spirit of fear and anxiety for my family in the name of Jesus Christ every fear of the unknown I cast them out in the name of Jesus Christ I break the power of sin in my family I break the power of wrong habits in my family in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that we are a love of God in my family we are a love of God we are a preacher of truth and righteousness righteousness walks in me the righteous nature of God walks in me I do not struggle to do the will of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. I am set on the course that I must follow. I'm set on the course that I must follow. I will not be distracted. I will not be deceived. I refuse to be deceived. I cut off every lying tongue. I cast out every lying tongue in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, you have no power over my mind. You have no power over my soul. My mind, will and emotions, you have no power over me. Sickness has no power over me. I am seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places and I have overcome the world. I have overcome sin. I have overcome Satan. I have overcome that dragon, that old serpent. I have overcome you. I have overcome the devil and all his demons of hell. I have overcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. I am an overcomer in Christ, for I am more than the conqueror. I am more than the conqueror in Christ Jesus. I am more than the conqueror. Victory is mine. In my academics, victory is mine. In my work, victory is mine. In all that I do, I prosper by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, give him thanks right now. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Sanda Bahaya. Lebrido Soko Zelibrando do corusa bakende do sabaya. Rebo bobo, give him thanks, give him praise. Samba hota. Lebrido kuza predike lo sto predike le sto. Lo bobo bobo bobo. I have overcome the world. Malababa yo korobosa. Hey, I speak to you over there. You have overcome the word today. I speak to you wherever you are. You have overcome the word today. You have overcome the word. The devil is under your feet forever. Maintain your victory. Affirm it. Refuse to give up. Say to your neighbor, refuse to quit. 
Say to your neighbor, you're not a quitter. You are not a quitter. Help me advise your neighbor. I can't have faith for you. It is your responsibility to get faith. Give time to the word. Give them this scripture. The Bible declares, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. I declare over you, that will not be your story. But you cannot faint in the day of adversity. Therefore, give yourself to the word of God. If you don't want to faint, get in the word. Amen. People of God understand something. It's not the, the, the gravity of the challenge. No. It is where your faith is. If your faith has been built strong, like that man that I give you the testimony who said his hand was paralyzed. I know I'm not saying you should do that. You, have to, you are not at that level of faith. But you grow your faith. You grow your faith. I can't have faith for you. I have to have faith for myself. That's, pers- that's DIY. Do it yourself. You got you to gotta have faith for yourself. But that's why you're hearing this word today. God wants to be strong in your faith. Because that's the only thing that can overcome the world. The faith, even our faith. He didn't leave us as victims. He says, I have, I have. He says, he has given us his faith. Galatians 2, 20 says, I've given you my faith. So we have faith. We have his faith. And with his faith, we overcome the world. Because faith is a victory. Come and say it again, I have overcome the world. Let it come from your spirit. And don't, don't you just say, I have overcome the world. I have overcome it. I have come, I have Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what happens. Let me tell you. The, well, where the word is right now is not a sprint. Where the word is right now, I know there are people that are thinking, Pastor, I just wish that this thing would just be over. What I will tell you is that even if that, even, even some of the things you are wanting to be over, when they, when they are over, and that will show up. You know why? This is the state we are in the world today. But I'm not afraid. You know why I'm not afraid? Because you see, the Bible said there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But the house of David grew stronger and stronger. And the house of Saul, what? Grew weaker and weaker. That's where it's going to end. And by the time, it's, that's how it's going to go. But we are going to stay in prayer. We're going to stay in the word. We're going to grow stronger and stronger. Don't mean that. Jesus trained us well. So it's not like, oh Lord, you just, no, I'm a fighter for sure. Uh, I'm a fighter in Christ. Shadama. He trained us well. He hasn't, listen, we, we want to use everything he has given us, we will use it. We will use the name of Jesus. We will use the power of in the word. We are going to use everything he has taught us in the word. We are going to use it to over, this word is it. We are going to, he said, occupy till I come. We are occupying till it comes. That's why you cannot be left alone. You cannot be left. Uh, you, you, you can't stay out of this. You can't let us out, you know. No, we got to remain strong in the faith. We got to overcome for our master till it comes. That's why you have to preach this gospel. If you believe it, you have to preach it. Tell your neighbor about it. Tell your friends about it. Don't be quiet about the gospel of Christ Jesus. We got to preach it till it comes. Because let me tell you something. We are going to go. We are, see, the body of Christ is not going out of this world in fear. Hey, Jesus, you better come take us now. We got, oh, they're coming for us. No. We are, it's a victorious ascension. Victorious ascension. We are going in dominion. We're not going out of fear. Ah, oh, uh, as, as this, as the, while they were banging the door, Jesus took us out. No. We are living in dominion with, my, with your feet on the devil's neck. <laughs> and the trumpet sound. Woo! I say, oh, glory to God. I finished as an overcomer. Let me say to your neighbor, you're going to finish as an overcomer. Not as a, not as a victim. Not as someone that needs to be pitied. No. No way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We want to give now. Hey, glory to God. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hey! Do you have a song in your heart? Sing it to him and say, Father, I love you. I love you, Lord. We've told you, if you want to partner with the church, you're welcome to partner with us monthly. Partner with us monthly. You partner with BT and Sky and all them people. Partner with, partner with Jesus monthly. Give your tithe and offering. Father, we thank you for your, for everyone that's honoring with your tithe and offering today. We speak your blessing over them. Thank you for increasing your people. Thank you because their needs are met. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen and amen. We are back tonight for the word of God at at our six. And our six hours of prayer is 28th of May. It's going to be a great time.
evangelism this Saturday and past group, make sure you join a place. Be part of it, a family for your past group. Run one in your house. Please, we, we advise if you don't have a place, reach out to us so we can hook you up. Help me say to your neighbor, keep going forward, keep shining. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy victory in your life. Victory continually. In Jesus' name, amen.